Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of From the Suggestion Box, Navigating Feedback, the Good, the Bad, and the Say What? This episode, I am honored to have the pleasure of having Erin Spink from Spink Tank as my guest for today. So let me tell you a little bit about Erin. So over the past 20 years, she has gained international recognition as a speaker and writer in volunteer engagement. Her work includes the first ever academic research quantifying the concept of volunteer engagement, multiple chapters in the CCVA accreditation textbook and co-editor of the ethics column for Engage. Erin has a passion to enhance and improve how leaders of volunteers use and collect metrics that matter. Erin is the principal with Spink Tank, a consulting and training firm that specializes in volunteer engagement. She is trained and spoken internationally, delivering thought-provoking keynotes that challenge leaders of volunteer engagement to be the strategic, powerful resources that they are within their organization and communities. Erin, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today on this episode. I'm so happy to be here, Nicole. Thank you. I'm so happy. (laughs) I am just thrilled because we have been in the same room many times, popped up, and I've been um, in the rooms where you were teaching or speaking and vice versa. And then yeah. we've been at the, like on panels together and all this stuff, but it's like, this is, we get to sit down and actually. Yeah. This yeah. Time. Yeah. A little one-on-one. It's nice. Yes. 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 So I was explaining to you a little bit before we started recording yeah. that with the, with the podcast for this year, I really wanted to try to find new voices in the field, people who yeah. have phenomenal things to say that we just don't have an opportunity to hear from very often. And then what do you know, magically appearing <laughs> in my LinkedIn, uh, in my LinkedIn feed is your new ebook, new voices and perspectives for 2023. And I was like, this is a song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're sharing a brain and you didn't know. <laughs> we were just like, Doo-doo-doo. so I reached out immediately because, oh my gosh, like, oh my goodness, there's so much that I want to talk to you about and ask you about. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask you about where did you get the idea to do the ebook? And and then the next question is, how did you find the contributors? Yeah. Okay. So um for those that don't know, this is the third ebook. And and how it started originally was um exactly kind of how how you started talking about us like building connection building community in the profession and so I really just wanted to elevate the conversation and so I just put a call out to peers to say like what are your best ideas for what's coming down the pipe and so that first ebook was in 20 it it was published in the start of 2018 so it started in 2017 um and uh, and I was very, you know, very lucky to have, you know, all the big names uh, in the profession and and, you know, and then I did it again in 2020. Ironically, nobody predicted COVID. So, uh, you know, but but it was, you know, it was great. And and then it should have happened. The next ebook should have happened last year because um, I started going on a bit of a two year cycle. And when I really started thinking about it, I just thought, you know, I don't, the top 10 ideas, top 20 ideas in volunteer engagement were great. But when I think about some of the challenges that I've seen over the last 20, 25 years in the profession, we don't lack good ideas. We don't lack smart people. What we lack is as many voices and perspectives as possible, right? It's, you know, and I feel a lot of the time, like, I'm just, I'm saying the same crap I've said for 20, 20, 20 years, right? And I'm just like, okay, like, I, 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 and and I know I have a very loud voice. I have a very large personality. I'm not a wallflower. Um, and I really wanted to take this opportunity to say, you know what? I, I don't I don't need the spotlight. I'm not here for the spotlight. How can I try and help corral some new people, some new faces, 
maybe give them that shot in the arm to start because I'll be honest, that's, uh, you know, I was a 25 year old kid and I emailed, I had the balls to email Susan J. Ellis and be like, I have an opinion about this. Cause I, you know, in your twenties, you think, you know, all that, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, and she was like, I think you've got a great point and you should write an article about that, you know, and a, just the fact that she answered my friggin' email yeah, and, and, and that she then encouraged me and thank God for her and Andy Fryer, because I'll, the, the truth is I write terrible first drafts of everything. So, you know, like they were so encouraging and I thought, you know, like that's real, that's true leadership to me yes. is it's bringing, bringing forward, giving people the opportunity to to learn their voice to find their voice um and to share their voice right so um so that's i just really kind of wanted to pay homage and pay it forward and just say like we especially now after the last three years that we've had you know with george floyd's murder with like so many systemic changes i just thought this is really it felt to me something that is appropriate, something that I wanted to do and something that would hopefully be of value um, to people in the profession, but also just, you know, it will help us advance, right? Because we keep, I find that volunteer engagement is very navel gazing, it's very echo chambery, um, you know, and as much as we love, you know, we talked about this, as much as we love those usual suspects, including ourselves, we shouldn't and and can't be the only ones raising our voices and being heard because we all come with specific lenses and specific experiences um you know and and so yeah so that's really kind of how it came about and and all of that so and the two yeah. things that I love about that number one is that you asked people to raise their hands. You invited anybody. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it wasn't like you were making this, this the decision of who thought who you thought whose voice was this. Yeah. You're like, hey, if you're willing to um step up to the challenge, yeah, like, I, I want to hear from you. So I love that number yeah. one. Um, and what the other thing that I really, really love, especially like you said the more and more perspectives we hear yeah. from, it kind of goes both ways, right? In terms of you start to hear different things, but then also it starts to really confirm all the things that we do know are true because yeah. now you're hearing it from multiple perspectives and yeah. different people coming in from different time, different backgrounds, different things. So it's like, yes, yeah. that principle we know stands true for sure now, not just yeah. because I'm saying it and you're saying it, but 33 other people from different parts of the world, different industries, they're all saying it. So it's yeah. like, we can with confidence say, this is a principle that you must implement because 55 yeah. people from around yeah. <laughs> the world who don't know each other all said the same thing. So it's yeah. like, it's totally a win win with that. Yeah. And, and I like, you know, and the, I mean, there was a lot of people who came forward generously who are well-known who said, you know, I'd be willing. And I said, thank you. But I actually, I really, I, I, I was quite deliberate, um, you know, so I didn't actually turn anybody away except people who are already really well known because I'm like, really want to give this opportunity to people who either haven't been published before or very rarely publish or who maybe, you know, have published a bit, but just had a really cool, fresh idea or lens to add to the conversation. Um, so that was, yeah. But I mean, here's the thing is, as much as in volunteer engagement, I find we are incredibly collegial and collaborative and supportive. Um, and we say we want change and we say we want strate strategic thinking and discussions. We, I don't think we do a great job of really stepping up to the plate. And, and I'm not sure if it's because there's not enough of those opportunities being given or, uh, you know, or, or what, I don't really know where that tension is, right? Like, and I, and I struggle with it and it over, you know, over the years, it's, it's, it's been a bit 
dis disappointing and depressing to me that more people, they say they want, you know, and this is just human nature, people say they want change, but, you know, but there, so let's start with the next person, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, so this was also a bit of a shot over the bow, so to speak, and like, you know, people want change, there, there is a there is an appetite for change right now, um, socially. So like, let's step up to the plate. Oh, you are speaking. I love my yeah. <laughs> So, and because, and I think a lot of it, um, people are afraid. Um, a yeah. lot of people in our industry are introverts. Um, and I know a lot of people, I have this conversation Every single time I am very much an introvert. People don't believe me, but listen, no, I'm when nothing. the camera is off and if I walk into a room full of, full of a whole bunch of people, I'm in the corner. Like I just posted the other day, I finished my last book and it was awesome because everybody was at the party and I was in the back reading, yeah. but like yeah. that, I'm, I'm good with that all day. Um, and so I feel like people are, I think it's fear. I think it's fear. I yeah. think imposter syndrome is huge. Like, why would they want to listen to me? Why would yeah. they, why would they? So having somebody like you push that forward and say, no, what you're saying is important and other people need to hear it. And it is yeah. valued and it is valuable. We need to continue to push it out. That is a huge part of that support and that help to help each other do that because it it really helps to reinforce um, the same thoughts that I have, the same thoughts that you have when we show up in any room, especially if some, like we walk in there and somebody has maybe some letters behind their name that I don't yeah. have. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I in this room? And nobody really wants to hear from me. And yeah. come to find out, even if it, changed and like had the light bulb go off for one person in the room it was worth it because yeah. you don't know how that one person what their circle of influence is and yeah. so keeping it to myself I could have had just what they needed and I didn't share it right so yeah. and I but I really really think that fear has a lot I feel I feel like fear has a lot to do yeah. with you know it, I that's really interesting and as I think about it, you know, like I was actually having a conversation with a, a like a friend and a colleague in the profession earlier today, you know, and we talked about volunteer engagement not really being seen as a legitimate profession externally. And I think that also perhaps, you know, weighs in on the imposter syndrome because we can't even agree on as a, as a profession to say what we do and what skills we bring, right? Like uh, you, we, it's, we find it still very hard to articulate our purpose and our impact and the skills that we bring because it is very much a jack of all trades type of type of profession. Um, and and I, I wonder if that kind of also feeds into that right you don't feel authentic because you don't have a really good kind of like um elevator pitch as to who you are and what you do right. um and also I think like you know I, I mean I've spent the last 15 ish years at national health charities in volunteer engagement that's a very different world than where I started which was very small you know, small nonprofits, um, you know, working with seniors or, uh, you know, people with, you know, uh, living in poverty and having food security issues, right? So, like, m the work that I did, fundamentally, it held the same principles, uh, you know, a lot of the same ingredients, but the work I did was very, very different. Now, keeping in mind, I was also at different levels of seniority, depending on the stage of my career, but... Um, but I can see, you know, and, and so what I like, just going back to what you said before, Nicole, about, you know, when we have more voices, we start seeing what are those kind of universal concepts and universal truths, you know, and it validates us. Because one thing, I mean, you, you shared in my bio, like the metrics that matter. One of the reasons why I think metrics is so important is because it's it seems like everything we say and do is opinion based, mm. not data informed 
right? It's not things that we can say, well, actually, there are statistics that show if we do this versus this, we're going to get this result with volunteers, right? And, and, and yet other professions very similar to ours do have those benchmarks. Yes. And, and, you know, even if we think about marketing, we, they know if you do X, Y, and Z in your subject line, you're going to get this percentage higher of open rate, you know, right. like, and, and we don't have any of that. And I just think it's such, it is such a fail, not a failing, but it is such a gap. Mm. For us. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that's why our profession is so lucky to have you to fill in that yeah. gap. <laughs> I, I'm not an expert in, in metrics at all. I'm, I certainly don't claim to be, but I, what I am is passionate about it because I see the value yeah. and I see how much, how much weight that they can be brought to bear. And I also think when we look historically, if you think about when you and I started in the profession, what are the things that we counted? I mean, it was, it was all about volunteer hours and right. how many active volunteers. And it was, it was bums in seats, right? Right, well, right. You know, and then, and then came the pandemic and we had no bums in seats because exactly. they were all in seats at home. And yeah, yeah. and, and we, you know, it's just, we really, I think, put our, put a lot of our processes around measuring the wrong things, things that, things like, even if we think about volunteer satisfaction, most, many of us, I would say maybe most of us are not necessarily the ones working directly with volunteers, right? right? We may not be the staff partners, but we are held accountable for volunteer satisfaction, volunteer retention, yes. things like that. And, and, and especially in, in systems where we have either uh, lateral influence with those peers at best, usually not, usually we're ju more junior, right? Or we may be lateral on paper, but in power in the organizational structure, we're, you know, we're we're a lot lower on the food chain, you know, and, um, and that's why I talk, I, I, I talk about power a lot too with metrics, because, you know, a, I, I have pushback from our peers saying, well, this isn't about, this isn't about me. And, and I'm like, if it's not about you, then it's not about the volunteers either. Like, right. you, you are the, re the organizational representative. Right, right. So it's not about you, I agree. But if it if there's nothing about you, then there's nothing about volunteers. Right. I remember one distinctive moment um, in my career where I was having a conversation with a supervisor and I had said, we are having these particular results for this reason. Like I just said it. Um, I knew it intrinsically. I was watching what was happening and I'm just like, I could tell you right now what's happening. This yeah. is happening. And then I don't even know how it came up, but it kind of came up by accident. We got a report that literally confirmed what I said and it put it in black and white with numbers. Yeah. And it was amazing. I'll never forget because in that moment, it was like that, a light went off in my supervisor's mind, right? Yeah. Where it was like, it's not that she didn't believe me before, but seeing it on paper yeah. where it was like, wow, you mean one sixteenth of the people who come in are actually becoming active and seeing the numbers on paper, it was, it yeah. was in that moment. That yeah. I was like, I want data for everything I say, <laughs> because yeah. you are just exactly right. It's, I almost felt like without the data, it was my opinion, but it, yeah. it really wasn't. It's just like, I've, I've been around this long enough to tell you, but there's something about seeing it in black and white that just, yeah. it registers differently. Yeah. Um. So I agree with you a hundred percent on that. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, it also challenges us, right? Because uh, like, uh, like I share a model that I have about metrics and half of it is external, but the other half is internal, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, it, and I think it's, it's well, it's very intentional the way I designed it because I think it's 
absolutely critical that as much as we're talking about the impact of volunteers, the impact of volunteer engagement, you know, in the organization, we also actually have to hold ourselves accountable yes. and, and, and have like a, you know, a continuous improvement kind of mentality for ourselves, because we could be doing a lot of things that are really inefficient or just not working. And, and because of our own biases and lenses, yes. we don't see it. Right. And there's, there's, I mean, there's no malintent, but you don't know what you don't know. And, and sometimes those numbers, I mean, now numbers can be easily skewed. So you right. have to be, you know, you have to be careful, but um, you know, but I think it's also a way for us not only to quantify the work that we do, but to qualify it to say like, this is, this is the skill right? This yes. is the work that it takes. Because I think going back to the old jack of all trades, you know, I think people are like, oh, well, you know, those volunteer engagement people, they're, they're just people, people, and it just comes naturally to them. Well, I can tell you, I'm not a freaking per people person. Like, Listen. I, like it, it's work. <laughs> yes. There's many times that I go home and I'm like, I have, I'm done peopling for the day. Like, yeah. Yeah. That was a lot. I'm, you know, and I tell people all the time, volunteer engagement has two sides. It is the systems side and the people side. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, a lot of people just think volunteer engagement is just the people side. Yeah. But it's not because I know people who are people people, but their systems are not as best as they could be. And they struggle because even though they're really great with people, they want to, they, sometimes they almost want to do everything one-on-one -on -one and it's yeah. not, and that's not scalable, right? Yeah. And you can't grow and, and yeah. do things. And, and it just, now you're doing so much because you're almost doing everything one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. But then there's people who are extremely great on the systems. And that was yeah. me, right? I was like, yeah. listen, if I get all of your questions answered and the process is done and everything is done, then you really don't even need to talk to me because you got everything you needed. And I'm just like, you got the email when you were supposed to, you got the information when you were supposed to, everything yeah. showed up when it was supposed to. And then, and then I was like, well, what more do you want? Well, we just want to talk to you. I'm sorry. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> you want to uh, interact? What yeah. That? Like, what is, what is that? Like, no, no. You have all the information you need. Why yeah. do you need to talk yeah. to me? And that was when I realized that that was the part that I had to work on because yeah. I, the relational part was just, I just, I didn't understand the importance of it. And for me, especially again, since I am like an extreme introvert, I was like, I don't want to talk to people. And that's why I was so good at the systems because I was like, if I give everybody that they wanted when they needed it, then I wouldn't yeah. have to talk to people. Yeah. But what I did find was that what the, when I put the systems in place and they were running very, very well, that it created time exactly. for me to be relational. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not stress about it. Right. Cause you know, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and so yeah. you are so right. So many people have this perception that it's like, Oh, you're great with people. You're going to love this, but it is definitely a 50 50. You cannot have one without the other. And, no. um, learning that was one of the hardest things for me, because like I said, I was an introvert and like, if I don't have to talk yeah. to anybody all day, I am literally okay. Yeah. Um, and so, but that was, I had to get pulled. Well, and out. it's a balance, right? It yeah. Is balance. It is, it is really, how do we use systems to bring about the best in people, right? Yeah. Because yes. this, isn't, this isn't, you know, people with a barcode on the back of their neck, right. you know, this isn't the singularity where we're right. just like beep, boop, 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 and people are robots. Right. You know, like, so how do we use systems? Because, you know, again, because typically in, in our organizations, small or large, we're dealing with big problems. We're dealing with complex problems. We're dealing with a lot of people, complex people with multiple needs, right? So how are you? And to me, that's the that's the sweet spot between leadership and management, right? Management is about processes and systems. Mm. Leadership is about people, right? And so wait, how wait, do I'm we- I'm sorry, hold on. I, yeah. I, that was, I'm going to need you to say that one more time and I'm not going to let my mm, get in the way this time. 
because that was so great. Can you please yeah. say that again? So like management is about processes and systems, right? It's knowing the answer, it's direction. Leadership is about people. It's asking the questions, right? And I think volunteer engagement really is that that balance, right? And that's why it's it's as much an art as a science, although as we said with the metrics, we don't have a lot of the science stuff nailed down, but I think, you know, it, it, instinctively we do, right? We just haven't documented and benchmarked it against one another to really say, is this unique to my situation, to the people that volunteer in my organization, to the way my organization systems are formed? Because people shape, you know, it's, it's, I think Winston Churchill said, you know, we shape our buildings and forever after they shape us, right? And it's the same mm-hmm. thing with systems, right? Form follows function. So we have to, you know, sometimes we think about the fact that <laughs> just throwing random quotes at you now. I mean, but I love it. And I'm trying to like stay quiet, but I was like, you're just like dropping bombs and they're just going, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to take it all in. That, that was such a powerful statement. That was such a powerful yeah. statement. It's so true. And that's why, you know, but but that to me is one of the one of the fundamental things we have to overcome in volunteer engagement is because uh, I, d- I don't, I wasn't there at the meeting of the super minds that made this decision as a profession, but it seems like there is a decision to align ourselves with human resources uh, as a way to gain respect and accountability and 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 again I, I can understand it's human resources but to me the systems are in are very very different the purpose behind the systems are very different so when i think about screening in human resources when you're going to hire an employee you're screening out you're screening out candidates right trying to find that one candidate that is the best fit well in volunteer engagement we have none of those limitations we are screening in right? We are bringing people in because we are community connectors. And that is a very, very different philosophy. And that requires very different systems, you know, and I think sometimes our systems by aligning with HR and other things have actually limited, limited where we've gone, but also have, um, have kind of stagnated us. A little bit because they've been more on that management side than on the leadership side. Oh, I love it. I love it. So see, you are we could sit here and talk for ages. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it. Um you are clearly passionate about what you do. And I yeah. love the creativity behind speak take. So yeah. can you tell me what led you to starting that and doing all of the things that you do? Yeah, I just, I follow my passion. So, I mean, Spink Tank actually started because I needed to come up with something because I had, uh, I had done my master's degree in leadership and I, I had unbeknownst to me, I, I, I thought I was thought I was being lazy and being smart and I'm like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate volunteer engagement for my my research thesis because oh we've been talking about this for 15 years at that point oh there's gonna be a ton of stuff yeah well the joke was on me there was nothing nothing we we had been we basically took the term because it was a you know uh you know a buzzword yeah. um employee engagement and just randomly applied it to volunteers presuming that it would be the same and in fact my research showed that it wasn't it was actually fundamentally different for volunteers and and that's really kind of what <laughs> got me on got me started with spin tank but really got me interested in metrics I'm like good lord we're we're just we're just randomly taking stuff and, and we're not validating any of this stuff so right where is our foundation being built from it's it's being built from buzzwords and things like that. So, so Spink Tank is really just my ability to kind of take on pet projects and do things that I, I'm passionate about that, that I hope add value to the profession that maybe smart spark something uh, in someone else. And, and for me, it's just a space to have the kind of strategic conversations about big meaty topics that I was, I was struggling to find 
at large in the profession. I mean, having one-on-ones, this was this was always great, but I like I wanted more of it and I wanted it with a larger audience and I wasn't able to find that space. So, mm-hmm. so I tried to create it. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm circling everything because I'm tying it all back in. Yeah. Um, so in your new ebook, new voices and perspectives, which I'm so excited about, yeah. um, do you want to talk a little bit about the people who are featured in it? I was able to read through it and wow, like talk, talk a little bit about why people should read through it and what they can expect when they do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm so fortunate that we had the people come forward, you know, like that, that I did. Um, and I, you know, I really, uh, there's something for everybody in there. So we start off with um, a piece by Adrian Baudry and Eric Leo Blaze talking about strategic foresight. And I just, I thought that was such a beautiful kind of prefacing because it's, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, right? but, but we can certainly all identify what are the themes, what are the kind of forces influencing the world? And then what does that mean for us? Like, what does that mean for our work? What does that mean for our organization? So I, I thought that was a, a great kind of way to kick off. And then there's actually a really neat range. So some of them, some of the pieces are very personal and practical. Some of them are, uh, you know, more research-based or kind of more academic conceptual. So there's a nice range, everything from, you know, Dr. Rebecca Jackson, who talks about wearing your green cape or your red cape. cape. And and really, I mean, to me, it's um, really that thought of, um, you know, an abundance mentality and a positivity mentality, um, you know, to, you know, Dr. Courtney Tull, who talks about her research about volunteer satisfaction. And, and and, you know, it's really solid research. And I think it just really solidifies some of the stuff that probably, people would say, well, sure, that makes sense, but it, it's n- now we have it actually documented and proven. And, right. and, you know, and again, for those people that need that legitimization of, of that type of knowledge um, to everything, you know, to, you know, we've got people talking about, um, you know, accepting volunteers with neurodiversity yeah. and being more flexible in schedules, right? Yes. Like things that are really practical and just, Again, you know, right now, one of the things that I'm seeing all over the place is this volunteer shortage. There's a volunteer shortage. People aren't coming. Well, maybe this is the maybe this is the 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 you know that moment where we have to really say, okay, well, we've been doing everything from the lens of what's best for the organization, right? Our how we're scheduling volunteers, the roles that we're doing. And we really have not made it volunteer centric or even volunteer friendly half the time, right? Um, so I so I love you know those pieces too. So I, I you know I just think there's something for everybody. I think there's very practical takeaways as well as just really opportunities to reflect and be like, hmm, you know how can I take this into my daily life? How can I take this into my work? And how can I be an advocate in my organization for changes that are going to have a positive impact on the work that we do? Because we know, we know that when we are more inclusive as communities, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, on teams. I mean, they've done gazillions of studies on diversity in teams, on women in leadership, on just, you know, we know that we do better as a species mm-hmm. when we, when everyone has a voice, when everyone has an opportunity to contribute and be an active agent in their community, right? Right, absolutely. And especially right now when, there, you know, there's so much poverty, there's so much stress people are still you know reeling from the effects of the pandemic people are really vulnerable right now and all of those cracks in our social fabric that existed have just been torn a little bit wider the last couple of years like now is the time where we need to be really thinking about how can we embrace because i think volunteering volunteering 
and volunteer engagement as, you know, we, we forget that volunteer engagement is, volunteerism is one of the core pillars of democratic societies, right? Yeah. And it really is that canary in the coal mine because, I mean, we're talking, we're seeing democracies crumble all over the place, yeah. all over the world. So anything we can do, I mean, and I think that's the stuff that excites me because it it shows that what we do matters. It has huge impacts, not just in our organizations and in our immediate communities, but around the world, right? When active citizenship is engaged, when they are able to interact with one another, it builds relationships and bonds that, that would have never been formed because of all those things that separate us as people. Um, so I think it's, you know, I, I hope people are inspired. That's what I always want is for you just to, for somebody to walk away with just one, even just one good nugget, like you said, right? Whether it's one person in the crowd or just one nugget, like just walk away with something, something, even if it's just to feel like what I do matters. Right. And so what I do, if what I do matters, then that means I matter. Yes. I need to be, I need to step up. I need to, you know, it's just, it's that kind of shot in the arm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so I pulled up, um, I pulled up the, the, the ebook because, yeah. um, okay. You're going to have to help me pronounce her name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your graphic designer. Is it Munira Ganji? Yeah. Munira Ganji. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of, like you said, just getting like diversity of thought, diversity of, you know, everything coming together and all of these things, I'm going to tell you that before I even read the whole thing, and for me as a Black Latina in this um, space, I'm going to be honest with you. The fact that there were a pair of black hands yeah. on the front of the cover resonated like, like shots around the world for me yeah. because 90% 90, 90 of the time, a lot of people, they're not even going to necessarily realize that, you know, um, little things like that make a yeah. huge difference because 90% of the clip art, clip art in the world is like, white hands right and you just don't think about it you yeah. just just like okay 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 it's the pasty ghosts like me yeah <laughs> i mean that's one way to put it okay i guess i'm just joke that i, I if, if i ever run out of like uh, you know foundation i'll just get, grab a bottle of white out remember when we had oh. white out? <laughs> I use white out because i'm so oh, oh my gosh okay. no 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 that, no that's a little that's a little <laughs> that's a little no <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. But I will tell you, Nicole, like it was a deliberate choice. So Munira gave me three choices. That was the only one with any hands. Um, and uh, the others were just more like different kind of images of new perspectives and stuff like that. But I actually chose it deliberately because I recognize that the profession is overwhelmingly white. We're overwhelmingly cisgendered, middle-class white women, right? And 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 that is not... I mean, there's, there, I am who I am. I, I don't get to cho choose, you know, right. what family I was born into and all of that, but it doesn't mean that I shouldn't acknowledge that, that there is an over-representation, right? And, and so part of it was a very deliberate choice. If I'm saying I'm trying to highlight new voices, new perspectives, we can't continue repeating the same visuals, the same names, the same voices, so I just want to tell you that I noticed it. Yay! I'm I glad. wanted to thank you for that yeah, because yeah. I know as small of a thing as it is, when I read new perspectives, new voices, and saw the hands, to me, it all lined up. Yeah. Now, not yeah. to say that if it wasn't a pair of if it was just, you know, a pair of white hands, not to say that the title wouldn't still have mattered, but the fact that it was literally piqued my interest a little bit more. It's like new voices. Yeah. Oh, and black hands. Look, and not to yeah. make it like a black and white thing, 
but it's it's those little things yeah to somebody like me like yeah. I noticed that because 90 percent of the time like that's just not a thing and I was like what oh, yeah 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 hey spank tank yeah <laughs> so I personally yeah. I yeah. just want to thank you well I'm glad yeah well, we have it, to be authentic and we can't, it, you can't just be, oh, oh yeah, I want to celebrate new voices, but I'm just going to do the same as we always did. And I also, like, I, I also, sorry, can we not swear? Sorry, I do, I have a terrible potty mouth. Uh, right. That's just repeating and it's just giving, you know, it's just giving, uh, you know, lip service to, to it. If we, if we're really serious, then that means actually taking a step back, right? And, and, and that was something else that, I, I wrote like a very short intro to this piece, but I didn't contribute a piece, which in the previous two eBooks I had contributed. Um, and I'm just like, no, this isn't, I really don't want this to be about me. I really want this to be about new voices that people love don't it. hear very often or new perspectives. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And don't, yeah. don't you know, I'm going to be reaching out to each one of them to see Good. if they will come on the podcast because yeah, yeah. it it's was brilliant. It's, and, this, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, right? You just never know the effect that you're going to have. You were literally an answer to a question that I was searching for and you yeah. provided it for me because you were doing what you were passionate about and you just you just did what you were doing and it was the answer yeah. to something that I needed and I just continue to want people to know and understand that like you don't you don't have to worry if it's affecting the masses it could be yeah. the answer for one person who needed something that that where they needed to to push forward something that they were doing and literally yeah. that's all that matters great if you yeah. hit the masses wonderful but if you make that difference in that one person's life it yeah. was worth it it was yeah absolutely it. speak up okay so here's yeah. the thing um again i'm bringing it all back to yeah you. yeah because you know the whole thing navigating feedback right yeah yeah <laughs> so as all of this, I mean, I know the book, I mean, I know the ebook just came out. I yeah. know, um, you know, it's still fairly new, but have, what has the feedback been about the ebook? You know, I haven't actually, this is one thing I think volunteer engagement professionals aren't great at is we don't give professional feedback to one another. So, I mean, people have been very supportive, you know, um, which, which I would, I, I've experienced before, fortunately, and continue to experience. So we're very uh, superficially supportive to one another, but I haven't actually had any direct feedback. Um, and I'd love some, you know, because again, like thinking two years from now for the next ebook, what do people want to see? What do people want to hear more of, less of, right? I mean, like this is, it's free. It's something that I just, I just do as a, you know, as a, a love gift to the profession, but, um, you know, but I want to make sure that if I'm going to put time and effort into it, that it's, it's something that, you know, is a value and, and, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly was really, I wouldn't say pleasantly surprised because I have great confidence in the profession, but I was really, um, it was really fun to work with people who have, uh, you know, either never written before this type of article or um, who it just, <clears throat> you know, were maybe a little bit less confident. They, they mm -hmm. had great, great content, but they just needed that, you know, that little, you know, uh, a re, a, you know, affirmation and stuff. So that was really fun and positive. And, and I, again, paying it forward because I've, you know, been very fortunate to have tremendous coaching in, in my life and my career. Um, but it was just, it was really fun to see and hear um, where people are at who are very at a di very different place in their career and volunteer engagement from me, um, who are working in very different environments, who, you know, have come to the profession. Uh, you know, I was really fortunate. I'm a bit of a, a unicorn in the profession in that, like, I started pretty much in the profession. I what? didn't. You, you know, are I know, a unicorn. I, I know. <laughs> now, I, it's true. It's true. I, it was my first job was running a couple 
volunteer led programs. Wow. My first job out of out of university. Uh, and so I went and got my volunteer management certificate. Um, so within a year, so I didn't, I mean, technically my undergrads in sociology with a minor in psychology, but I, I immediately got my volunteer management certificate and just kind of like, so I didn't, I didn't grow up wanting to be a volunteer management, uh, you know, professional, but I, I fell into it at the very beginning of my career. So, you know, my trajectory has been very different. All of our trajectories are different. Um, so it's really, and that's why, you know, I loved um, when I was able to, to teach uh, because it just in, in like in the volunteer management certificate program at Conestoga College, because it was so, I think, so important for people who have been in any profession for a long time to see and hear and talk with and understand where people are coming from, who are coming into the profession or considering coming into the profession yeah. and really understanding that diversity of thought. Because, again, like it, you get taught, it's like doctors. Doctors who complete medical school are using the same frame of reference to treat diseases or conditions that, right. you know, actually, it, that's just not how it happens anymore, right? We know more and we can do better now, right? right? But that's their frame of reference. And so I think it's really healthy to always go to people who are newer in their careers, newer to the profession, because they're going to challenge you. Yes. Even just answering, even just answering basic questions being able to articulate the whys behind things is is yes. so yes. good. It's so healthy. Yes. Yes. Especially to get yeah. questioned why. And you're just like, yeah. well, you know, I'm not really sure why. Yeah. I've never really <laughs> thought oh, about it. We've yeah. just always yeah. done it. But now that you've asked me, let's yeah. stop yeah. that. And let me tell you, my mission, my mission on this earth, by the way, is to be able to influence the profession in a way that's such that some child somewhere when they are eight years old and they ask them, what do you want to be when they grow up? Yeah. Volunteer engagement leader is going to yeah. be on the list. It. It's going to be like yeah. firefighter, doctor, yeah. <laughs> lawyer, volunteer engagement leader. Nice. That's my Love mission it. in life is to that's get awesome. on that list <laughs> that would be that huge way. yeah even yeah. even for kids to know what the heck that is even to know right? what it is exactly yeah. exactly you know yeah. and it's it's crazy because in the u.s alone i think there's like 1.5 million nonprofit organizations now they aren't all necessarily like super formal and all have volunteer programs but a lot of them do which yeah. means there are a lot of volunteer engagement leaders out there, just yeah. as many marketing directors and finance. I mean, there's just as many, but it's like, we're out in the ether. We don't exist. Like nobody yeah. hears, but we're here. We're here. Yeah. So, or it's done off the side of somebody's desk. And so it's one of those like other duties as assigned and it's right. all, considered a real job. And oh, yeah. Oh. And I, I, and I have, I do think that the pandemic has almost like that's how it was when I started and I do feel like the pandemic's kind of taken us back a little bit um you know in in terms of like there was a lot of um people being reassigned into HR roles or you know like they're just not bringing volunteers back and so they're not bringing the volunteer engagement leader back and and so it's it's a tough time I really hope that I really hope it changes. I mean, most things are cyclical, but I just, it's exhausting. You just, you climb up the, you know, like, what is that? The, the, um, oh my God, Laura Bush, the running up the hill, right? Like the, the, the trendy song right now, like running up the hill. I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't got the cardio to do <laughs> this stuff running up the hill again. Like I've been running up this damn hill for 25 years. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, Aaron, I have to ask you, what was it like to be an author in this book for people getting ready and studying for their CVA, and which means so many people are being shaped by what you put in here, the intro, the <laughs> no intro pressure. part, and the ethics, like, 
Yeah. Please talk to me about that. Um, I mean, it was a huge, huge honor. Uh, Katie Campbell, the former executive director, um, had reached out to me and uh, it was not long after I did my um, my research thesis with my master's and had and had come out with you know, the piece about quantifying the concept of volunteer engagement and, um, uh, you know, and it's, it was, uh, it was daunting. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I actually spent every, every Sunday I went to my local pub and I, I wrote, I like had lunch and I wrote for hours and I like, you know, erased it and redid it. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I think in the, third edition I was able to completely redo it um uh and and that was really exciting and I could it was less of like a this is the history of our profession um and, and more of like a this is who I think we can be and who I believe we should be if we you know if we agree that we want to make a difference a positive difference in the world um so it was it was a really, I think, a nice merge of like the pracademic of like, here's, you know, like agreed upon conceptual models and and things. And, and then here's what it means for us as practitioners in terms of our daily work. And this is how we aspire um, and hopefully inspire. So it was it was really just taking my heart and my brain and like smushing them <laughs> on, on paper uh i i i i mean i think even if you never even if it's it's not published i i think everybody should be writing right like just mm, yeah having deep thoughts right like if you were if you were asked to write something what would you know i just think it just it's such a, a it was a really wonderful exercise it helped me really consider like you know what 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 are my beliefs? What do I think the trajectory of the profession is? Where what do I think are positive influences and and things that have not I don't think positively influenced us as a profession? And how do we shake those things off and move forward? Um, so it was it was a, it was just a really it was fun, but it was you know it was heavy at yeah. the beginning. Um, and and I I mean it was just a a massive honor it you know continues to be a massive honor and and I was able to actually join um you know Emily and and you know kind of refresh like work with her to refresh the article on ethics you know because obviously the world has changed so so significantly yes um yeah. you know but I mean ethics ethics are our touchstones right yeah. um and so so that was a lot of fun too and and working like co-authoring is a really fun, um, but you know, but challenging and in, in I think really positive ways exercises. I'm, I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a lot of co-authoring experience with Rob Jackson and and Aaron McLean. Um, so I, I, I think it's a really great exercise um, for people if you're writing either by yourself, but also if you're not maybe confident, like write write with a partner because. Mm -hmm. it, just you're able to both bring strengths to yes. uh you know to things and um yeah so yeah it was it was great I'm I'm it's one of the things I'm most proud of as you should be yeah. and yeah. I want to thank you for that because yeah. it helped me to get my CVA and countless hundreds of others that you are imparting upon us and just you have to feel proud that you are sewing in to the strength of the profession as it grows in the future. Like, I mean, that is just, that's, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. And if anybody wants to like, you know, take shots at it, like I'd love to discuss, like, I, I really don't, I mean, I, I have no problem having intellectual arguments about ideas. I, I love, I actually, I really enjoy that. So uh, just, you know, don't tell me my hair looks bad, but if you think that I've got a stupid idea, then I'd love to hear that. Right, right. Speaking exactly. of feedback, you know, or su suggestions, Erin, maybe you might want to <laughs> try a new hairdo. Uh, not so much. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Okay. Now, okay. A couple of things that just to say, um, in addition to if writing with somebody, presenting with somebody, mm -hmm. um, there was somebody, her name is Angela and she had this amazing presentation and she just wasn't hundred percent comfortable presenting by herself, but she's been co-presenting with people and it's worked out really great for her. And she That's is awesome. getting her message out into the world. So I love that you say that because even if it's something, you know, especially, and I, and I, and I just continue to speak from the introverts point of view, because I don't know what it's like to be an extrovert and speak on that. So that's why I'm always talking from this, that if you feel like maybe you do have something that you want to share, but maybe you don't want to do it by yourself, find somebody to do it with. Yeah. It is definitely, it can be a lot more fun. Um, and you have that, that, that buddy system. It's like the yeah. sense of like support and comfort in doing it. It just like you were saying in writing the article and I mean, just think about it, think about it, but you, and, and it's, everybody brings different strengths to things, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I firmly believe everybody has something to share and so yeah. speak up and do it. Okay. My last, last, last thing. Um, engage. Do you write for engage, right? Are you co-op? Yeah. So, yeah. So can you tell us? I do it all. A lot of people <laughs> may not know that you're part, you know, behind yeah. that. So talk yeah, to us about yeah. Engage, please. Yeah. So, so engage is, um, is a journal. It's been around for 20 odd years. Um, and, and so I have the great pleasure. So Rob Jackson, uh, the infamous and lovely Rob Jackson is our editor in chief. And, um, uh, a few years ago, um, when Susan J Ellis, uh, was ill, um, she'd asked me to step in, uh, to her spot and, and start writing, um, with Rob, who was already a friend of mine. And, um, and so we do the points of view, uh, and, and it's, it's really actually, it's kind of funny because originally the points of view, which is a free article for anybody, you don't have to be a subscriber or member to engage. Um, but, um, it was intended to be two people arguing two different sides of things, but unfortunately, um, Rob and I have very similar values and, and ideas. So we usually don't, don't argue too much. Um, but we do, but I do that. And then I have the great fortune. Uh, so from for five years, sorry, I've got cats that are going crazy. Um, for five years, I um, edited the training designs section, which was people submitting articles about how, you know, different trainings they've done with volunteers, tips on training, um, things like that. Um, and then we, um, when we reimagined um, the journal, we closed that off because we had many, many years um, of that. And I had proposed that we start an ethics column because it's an it's an area that we don't talk nearly enough about. Yeah, I think now. we're doing a much better job now. Um, and I think the CVA is doing, uh, and especially my beloved FISA Van Zandt, yes. um, is doing amazing things and really helping to normalize the conversation about ethics and to help people become more confident and conversant with it. And so that's really what we had intended with the new ethics column, which I um, co-edit with the lovely Erin McLean. Um, so we are the Aarons. Um, and, <laughs> um, and ironically, her, her maiden name was Erin Schneider. So we were actually both Erin S's for, for many years. That's um, so funny. So it, yeah, so I said, one of us has to get married. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, she has a wonderful husband, but uh, I tried to get him to marry me, but he chose her. He yeah. chose the better Aaron. But anyways, <laughs> he, um, but but it, you know, it's it's really our uh, what we want is to. We're not experts in ethics, but we want to have the conversation. Conversations. It's important to have the conversations. and important to start building that in our repertoire because you know when I think about any of the volunteer management certificate programs that I'm familiar of there's very limited time or conversation if any devoted to the ethics of the of the profession and I'll apologize to any programs where that's not the case but for those that I'm familiar with there you know it's it's something that might be covered but it's not really you know it's not a thread that's throughout which it should be right so that absolutely. was the purpose of starting that yeah yeah no absolutely because it plays so much into 
our everyday job and you like yeah. again you you don't it's one of those things you just don't hear about but it yeah. is kind of like the baseline for every decision and everything that we're doing yeah. all the time and occasionally it might come up to surface but then it's it's always just like at any given moment it could just yeah yeah, yeah. So well, we have to be ready. And, and I mean, ironically, we started this just before the pandemic mm. and the pandemic has just brought out a whole host of ethical issues. So, so, I mean, uh, you know, maybe I should have bought a lottery ticket at the time. Cause I had like a, you know, a psychic moment or something, but, but it's just, it was very timely. And, and I, I hope that we can continue the conversation and I hope it's, I hope it's helping just bring it a little bit more to the forefront for people because it is, I mean, and again, it ties back into everything we've been talking about, which is like the value and the importance of the profession and the, the power that we don't always acknowledge that we have and the influence that we have within our communities um, and, and the positions that we hold, um, you know, in determining who gets to volunteer, who doesn't, for what reasons, right? Like, you know, all of those things. And, and those are all boil down to ethical decisions. Right. Right. Yeah. Woo. Woo. That just gave me chills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Okay. Oh, I like, I'm still processing. Give me a minute. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back after the, you know, after this brief commercial. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, all right. Well, let's continue on. I have one more question for you. In all the years that you've yeah. been doing this, what is a piece of feedback that will stick with you forever? It could be good. It could be like, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. It could be like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, but share, share something good. <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll share, I'll share this just because we were talking about like an um, imposter syndrome and yeah. really finding, finding your voice and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm like you, I'm actually not an extrovert. Um, but I do have a very big personality. I always have. Um, and I really struggled early in my career with knowing what is professional mm. versus what is authentically me. And, you know, and I, and I had, um, I, I've, I've had many, many mentors, thankfully, in my life, but one of them um, that ran a leadership program that I took in my 20s talked to me about that you're always you, but you can bring forward different aspects of yourself without being inauthentic, you know, inauthentic to you and your values. And, you know, and she said, think about it, you know, like there's there's things that you would say to your best friend that you might not say to a perfect stranger. It's still you, but it's just, you're bringing forward different things. And that really helped me, um, you know, cause I had a lot of feedback about, you know, like you're a lot, you're, you're a lot, Aaron. <laughs> and it, it wasn't always a compliment. <laughs> uh, I learned, um, you know, and I really, I, I really struggled for years to say like, like, this is who I am and I'm okay. I'm okay with who I am, right? I had a boss for many years who was very, very different from me, um, personality and values. And and I always felt a lot of pressure to be more like her, that, mm. that if I wasn't like her, I wasn't doing the job right, or I wasn't, you know, I was just lacking in some way. And I, you know, and I, really got to a point finally where I'm like we may be we may we may approach things differently we may approach you know how you're going to handle something is not how I'm going to handle it but I think we can come to an agreement of what the outcome we want we a shared outcome we want so yeah. my road's going to be different than yours but if if we can agree to these are the outcomes that we want then I'm going to get there my own way yeah right Right. You know, and um, yeah, so I would I would just say there's, you know, it's okay. I think, and I, I think I just wrote this on LinkedIn for um, someone who had this question about imposter syndrome. I'm like, I think authenticity is 
a, a very important factor in being a leader. Like people don't want to follow robots. They don't want to follow someone who is airbrushed perfection because it's not real, right? right. Like right. we all have flaws. We all have things. And, and it's those things that make us unique and, and make us valuable um, and relatable. And so I would say, don't don't question yourself. I would just say, think about what are those values? What are those things that make you uniquely you? And how do you how do you share them in ways that are appropriate in that circumstance without feeling like you're denying being who you are? And it is a bit of a tightrope and you're going to make you're going to go too far one way and too far another because that's just how you how people learn. But but never never apologize for being who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think, I also think that's really where we're, where I've seen things going with leadership development, right? We used to have this like savior, you know, oh, the leader knows everything. They have all the answers, right? To much more of a, you know, collaborative leadership style, servant leadership style, yep, you know. Servant leadership, and, yep. And I really think that that is, because we recognize that people aren't infallible. And in fact, we've had people who we think are really great leaders who have led us down some very terrible paths, you know? Like, yeah. so, um, and again, it, it speaks to the multiple multiplicity of voices that everybody's gonna have a slightly different way of doing it. And that's okay if if our shared outcomes right are are the same. So you're gonna you're gonna take this detour, I'm gonna take this detour. And and that that's there's nothing wrong with that it's focused less on the process and more about the outcome yeah oh that was good yeah. stuff yeah. I mean my last question was going to be what tip would you like to leave but I think you yeah. just cleared <laughs> that up for us you just took care <laughs> of that so yes oh my goodness okay so we could talk for literally another hour I have so much oh, I'm yeah. just <laughs> so much but but I'm I am going to bring this to a close but yes I, I okay believe it's gone by so fast so fast um if people want to get in touch with you reach out to you um how do they get in touch with you what any new projects that you have that are coming up yeah no I well I'm I'm just still promoting promoting the ebook um okay. please you know download it uh, i've also moved the other previous two ebooks to the same uh the same it's my teachable store so yeah. it's all free um if people want to reach me probably the easiest is through linkedin which okay. is uh aaron rebecca spink um and yeah i just i honestly I, I like to take a little bit of a breather uh in between um and and get a little bored because when I'm bored, my mind starts wandering and I think creative and fun ways. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a little bored um, <laughs> after all this. And, and that sounds like a good blog comes. post. Yeah. Get yeah. a little bored. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. Anyways, but yeah, love, always love to chat, love to hear from people, um, the good, bad, and the ugly, because we don't grow when, when we only hear the good. Exactly. 1,001 thousand percent yes. thus this podcast has helped me to grow phenomenally <laughs> let's just put it that way Woo! okay awesome. well oh my goodness Aaron thank you so so much for it was being my pleasure thank best. you and man this time just flew by I feel like we might literally just have to do this again because there's just so much to talk about things I don't even think yeah. I even got a chance to ask you. And I, yeah, it's probably not the first time. I think this, this is probably going to have to happen again. Yeah. Um, like every week, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> literally. I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so, but for those of you who have listened to this, I want to thank you so much for joining us for this episode. If you loved it, you know, let Erin know that she did a wonderful job. Send her some feedback on the ebook, y'all. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's so true. When we're putting that content in out there, it is so important for us to hear back from you because we want to make sure that it is valuable to you. We want to make sure that it is worth it because nobody wants to waste their time doing something that is not helpful. So throw out that feedback. We want to hear it. 
Um, so if you're listening to this, you can like, share, tell everybody, pass it along to your colleagues, um, whatever you do. I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Aaron, thank you for joining us. My and pleasure. I hope to see you all on our next episode of From the Suggestion Box, Navigating Feedback, the good, the bad, and the say what? See you next time. Bye-bye.